and loaded up with a freshly caught seafood banquet, we head back to cook up some tucker. Chuck these on a fire somewhere, eh? Yeah, on a Cook them up. I start the fire the traditional way. Oh, you know the hardest part about making fire is getting enough breath after you've been drilling it to blow on it. Ooh. Enough, we'll make a little fire here to get that fish cooked, eh? How are we gonna cook her up, boys? We're just gonna... Just chuck him on the fire. <laughs> Nothing fancy, just chuck her on the coals, eh? Yeah. Generally, when you cook the fish like that, it's, the meat stays a lot more moist because it's cooking in its own juices. And all I'm gonna do now is we'll take them off the coals and we'll stick them over here on the bed of leaves. Bit of salt and pepper, It'll taste great. That's the secret to cooking an open fire like that, is to keep, that, the, keep the uh, scales on, skin, scales, everything on. And you just peel that off, and what's left is that beautiful cooked flesh. Straight from there into the coals, eh? Nothing better. Richard leads us to look at some amazing Kimberley rock art left by his ancestors. This fella up here. Yeah, this one? Yeah, the Wanjana. Oh, that's a Wanjana? Yeah. Wanjana. He's the rainmaker. Yeah? Yeah. He should have had a serpent with him. Freshwater serpent. Yeah. That serpent look after the waterhole. When he makes the rain, the serpent has got to be there to Make sure the water got to be there all year round for... Ah, OK, for in the dry season. Yeah, in the dry season. Ah, and that's why they, they would have painted it. Yeah. Yeah. So your... your ancestors? If the spirit it still lives, lives with us. You don't know how yeah. old? No. Is that, that... that one there, maybe, is that the head of the serpent, do you think? Like that? One there. One from there. Yeah, right through. Who did? The serpent, yeah. Yeah. Who's down at the tail. bottom over here? The Wanjana, a mouthless face with large round eyes. It's the protector of the waterhole. So when you see one, it usually means there's water nearby. And of course, water gives life. So, you know, when you, you live in Columbaroo, but when you, when you come out here, because it's really hard to get to here, right? Yeah. You know, unless you've got a big helicopter. Well, you know, how do you, how do you feel when you come back to your country here? Oh, when I come back here, I look at all this, you know, I feel free. Yeah. And I feel happy inside. I feel light. Awesome. This region is fascinating because you've got the Wanjana art that dates back 4,000 years, as well as the stuff from what's called the Claude Hand period, which can be 10,000 years or more. It's the only place in Australia where the two sit side by side. So this cave has got so much history. And so they're, they're painting on the wall what they, what they hunt. And, that, yeah, yeah, that's what they live on. What's one of the main fish that, that they would have caught through here, do you reckon? Um, They're obviously spearing them, so... Yeah. Plenty of mullet. Mullet? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that looks a bit mulletty, doesn't it? Yeah. Their yeah, mullet would be easy to spear. And we saw heaps of those today, didn't we? It's a mullet, mm. queenfish. Well, th thank you very much, Richard, for showing us, me and Simon, and obviously the people of Australia as well, you know, your, your homeland and, and giving us the privilege to be here with you. And it's a, it, I, look, it's a really big thing for us because, you know, we, we don't... We don't get to we, we don't get to come into this sort of country without your permission and I'm glad that you give us permission and come with us and help us to get in here. And it's good. It's a really good place. So we leave, grateful and also feeling good that we could bring Richard to this sacred spot. It's obviously affected him in a positive way. <laughs> <laughs>